The point of this video is to answer one of the most common questions I get and also one of the most common failure modes of an old TV which is vertical collapse. The vertical circuit seems to be very susceptible to problems and they're always very pronounced and this is a, a pretty severe uh, example of that problem which is almost total collapse. Now whenever you get a situation like this you want to absolutely minimize the brightness. I know that seems pretty bright probably in the camera but it's actually barely visible to my eye. If I was to turn the brightness up all the way I would very quickly burn that line in the CRT and that line would be forever burned and there is a dark spot and you'd never be able to correct it. So I want to go over kind of the steps to correct this problem. Conventional wisdom would probably say it's capacitors, but conventional wisdom is also often stupidity. So we want to go through the steps that I would go through and properly diagnose and repair the vertical collapse. This is an early 70s Sears, it could be late 60s, 69, but early 70s. Sears, Japanese made, uh, tube tabletop black and white, it looks like, I don't know, 11 inch, 12 inch. The actual set is almost irrelevant. Uh, almost all sets, tube sets, use a multi-vibrator type uh, vertical deflection. And I guess the kind of the first thing you could do is you could try the percussion maintenance and we actually see some activity there. Vertical line or vertical linearity there and then the next one over we have height. Those are the two adjustments that we're concerned with. Those fill out the top and bottom of the vertical deflection. Now I've received questions I can't find these adjustments on my TV. My TV doesn't have them yes your TV has them sometimes Philco is known to hide them behind knobs like you pull off the knobs on the front and they're actually you go down through the center with a screwdriver sometimes they're hidden in different places but all televisions tube televisions have at least two vertical deflection adjustments uh, they're usually called height and linearity. Sometimes there's vertical size, sometimes there's vertical centering, but these are the two that we're interested in. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try adjusting these. It's possible that just the pots are dirty, like a dirty volume control, and that uh, is causing this problem. Just to give you an idea of my brightness, you can see that's how bright it will go. Now when recapping a TV, the vertical circuit, because it's so low frequency, is hypercritical to using the right type of capacitors. If it has mylar or paper, you really can't go to disk capacitors. They have too much drift. It won't work right. You could do that in the vertical, I mean the horizontal and the audio and some other sections, but you can't do it in the vertical section. It's just too sensitive. Um, so this I'm adjust. I'm going to try and adjust the vertical linearity here. Okay, I'm turning the vertical linearity control all the way from one side to the other, and there's nothing. Okay, I'm turning the vertical height control all the way from one side to the other and there's absolutely nothing. This is the uh, vertical hold. It appears that the vertical oscillator multi-vibrator might not even be running. Now a lot of times the symptom will just be you only get deflection to here and you have these gaps on top. That's different from feeding modern 16 by 9 content off your converter box or satellite into one of these and you have a black area at the top or bottom because it's cropped 
because these are the, the display is four by three on these and modern content is 16 by nine so that will be cropped that's different than no not enough vertical deflection now we'll show that later in the video I've taken the back off the set here and you can see it's a Japanese built vacuum tube set and I'm taking a look at the tube chart usually all TVs radios had these sometimes the glue dries and they fail but anyway I'm taking a look for tubes that are in the vertical circuit so we have a 6GH8 here which they say is a vertical oscillator and then we have a 10CW5 which they call the vertical output a lot of times the vertical when they have a vertical separate vertical output tube like this which in this case it's a 10CW5 10CW5 would probably work pretty good as an audio output tube so the first thing I'm going to do since this seems to pounding on the set seems to have some effect on this I'm going to wiggle the tube around in the socket and see if maybe it's a bad contact or a cracked you really want to watch where you put your hands in here not only is this stuff hot but it can shock the living so moving the tube around I'm not getting anything sometimes the when you have these circuit board sets like this the solder solders will go cold on the bottom of the circuit board so that didn't do anything okay now the next step is to change these two tubes and I'm just trying to do this kinda of quick and dirty I'm not going to test the tubes I'm just gonna change them and we'll see what happens so we got a 6GH8 a super common tube some color televisions have 10 or 12 6GH8s in them and they're kinda of known for being unreliable and I notice right off the bat that it looks like a resistor has been changed here you can see it sticking up right there it's starting to get dark out here so the but that resistor right there it looks like it was replaced after the fact is an indicator maybe somebody was in here maybe this set was taken to a shop and they diagnosed it down to a failure like the vertical output transformer and the customer refused the repairs because parts weren't available or the price exceeded the value of the set um, it's tough to find parts for these early Japanese tube televisions it's hard to find parts for Japanese tube equipment period you always almost always have to substitute I also see what looks like a capacitor you see that orange capacitor right there that was changed in similar similar mode of just not sticking it all the way through and cutting the leads but just leaving it hanging way up off the board I replaced the 6GH8 to start and this has the original Sears branded tube in it and I can tell right now that it has not done anything because yeah it's the same and these are our two adjustments we'll just kind of make sure those are in the middle you can hear the vertical it sounds kind of like I think you're hearing when you hear it you're hearing the 30 Hertz pulses in the um, yoke and in the vertical output transformer but when we get it going here you'll hear it in the camera it's it's a very distinct sound that you miss when the TV is not working when it's not working in the set I changed the 10CW5 with a brand new old stock 
in CW5 and the set is warming up and I still do not hear the vertical deflection so I don't expect anything okay well we've gone as far as we can go without a schematic so at this point and I'll think about this for a while but at this point it's time to get a schematic for whatever you're working on a lot of people complain about paying twenty two dollars to purchase a Sam's photo fact that's just part of the expense that's part of the name of the game um, pony up the dough you know your time is your time is worth more the time saved is going to be worth more than the twenty two dollars it costs to get the schematic so Sam's photo fact online if you can't find it through another source so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna get the schematic on this and we will proceed probably by checking DC voltages I noticed that the 10 CW5 got extremely hot in that short time it was on and that's because I'm not running a signal through it so it's just drawing a lot of current so we want to absolutely minimize the runtime on this while we're testing it you can see there's a lot of junk uh, early Japanese notorious problem capacitors all those gray ones down in there those all have a tendency to short and leak and fail so I'm still not to that point though we're diagnosing this we're not shotgunning it check out these very odd yellow all plastic I believe they're paper capacitors in a plastic capsule plastic package and those that there looks like it's in a white plastic package and our across the line cap looks like it's in a white plastic package and I see some more of those yellow ones back there on the board very interesting all right schematic coming up next back to this thing we're dealing trying to sort out the vertical deflection issue and I was way off on the year this is a 1967 so it was off a little bit there so I've got our the area of our schematic printed out that we want to work on and this right here is a vertical circuit this is very similar on uh, on almost all sets this is a multi vibrator setup vertical malt multi vibrator so it's just a type of oscillator and I could hold this without shaking let me see and so we basically have our feedback here this is our loop right here and all of these capacitors when they drift and they go bad and they get lossy and leaky and change value they cause vertical deflection issues I rarely I can't say that I've ever seen capacitors cause the thing not to work at all as it is in this case but usually when you get poor linearity and you can't get um, get the the deflection equal size from top to bottom or you can't fill out the screen or it's scrunched up on the bottom and too wide on the top it's usually the tubes or the capacitors so first thing we're gonna check is we're gonna check this transformer because the transformer is just right here and we should have 130 volts on 135 volts on one side and then on the other side it should be about the same this says do not measure and the reason why is when this circuit is working there are huge pulses here that will cremate any meter so in this case we're 100% sure it's not working at all so we can measure this and see if maybe this coil has gone open I'm going to use this meter this is a military ME297U 
and this is basically um, the military version of a Simpson 260 which a Simpson 260 this is not the best choice for tube circuits because it's not a vacuum tube voltmeter and it has a lot of uh, load and will artificially load the voltages down but this is going to be indestructible so even if this was running it would probably fry the TV before it would fry this. This has unbelievable protection in it. This is designed for uh, you know late late teenager military people in training to abuse so alright let's get going on this so we'll fire it up and as I said yesterday we don't want to let it run too long and I'm on DC volts 250 volt scale I guess I could well I only got so I'm gonna start here and we'll see what we got. So we got about 150 volts on one side and on the other side we got the same thing 150 volts. It's actually dropped. Well, let's see. Okay, so t we got 125 volts there. And we got 90 volts there. And that's because the circuit is not running. That's why this tube was getting red hot. And it's already red hot. Because the tube is loading the hell out of this thing. It's drawing a lot of current through there because the oscillator is not working. That tube would probably red plate and melt down if I left it on. So it looks like this is not open. So that's a good sign. It could have some shorted turns in it, but I still don't think that would cause it not to run, although it is possible. Now the next step is try to get this chassis out of here so we can access the bottom of the board to measure some voltages. And the screws are all stripped, like it's been in and out of here a bunch of times. Okay, I got this thing to as serviceable a point that I can without disconnecting or breaking anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to do some basic DC voltage checks. And I'm not interested in, let's see, I'm not interested in any of the voltages on this tube. We know that this voltage is getting here and that this voltage is getting here by how hot it's getting. If it was not getting warm and we didn't see the voltage drop across this coil, then I'd be interested in this. What I'm interested in is pretty much just pin number one here, which is uh, the plate, and it gets its voltage here through from the 450 volt boost. Let's see, where's this? Okay, that's a blanking pulse. So we get 425 volts boost here here up to the plate. Now this capacitor could be shorted, this resistor could be open, that could be open, that could be open. So let's start with pin 1, see if we're getting anything there. Now because this is a boosted voltage, we have to wait for our horizontal output section to warm up. So we're getting, um, let's see, 50, we're getting 15 volts there. Let's try adjusting the height. Okay, we're going to try adjusting the height here. Get this on a tripod and let's see. So yes, the height adjustment does seem to affect it, but it is still low. Okay, where do you go from here? So we know this is good. 
changed our tubes. We don't know if this transformer is shorted or not. That could very well be. If it had shorted turns, it could load this down and just stop the oscillator. But we're going to say that's not likely for now. Um, this voltage is here. It's low, and it's probably going to be low like this one with the oscillator not running because it's just loading it down. So both of these pots seem to affect this voltage, so it seems like they're working. I think the next step is to pull the thing out and test all of these capacitors. Now you might say, well, why didn't you just recap it first? But we want to actually diagnose it. This is looking at the other side of the chassis. With it out of the set, you can see this has been replaced, which is a 0.0022. And then we have this resistor here that's been replaced. Now these R and C numbers on the board are, do not match the SAMS. SAMS has its own numbering index. So that 0 0.0022 that's been replaced is this capacitor right here. So maybe it had linearity issues, maybe not. I think the next step to do is, since I'm trying to actually diagnose and troubleshoot this and not just throw parts at it, is to go through and test all of these capacitors that are part of this circuit. And we'll see if we can find one that's open or shorted to where it would stop the circuit from working totally. First thing I've done is lifted one lead on all of them and I've gone through and measured all of them on diode check just to see if there were any that were punched through and shorted and none of them are shorted. No shorted capacitors, just blatantly shorted. We're looking for something big here that would cause the oscillator and the circuit not to work at all. We're not looking for linearity problems or anything like that. We're looking for a hard fault. This is the first capacitor. It's a .01 and it looks really, really sad. I can't even get the eye to open. Okay, this yellow one seems to be a bit better. Still not good. This brown one here, pretty sick. Uh, this, this bigger brown one is a little bit better. This yellow one here, pretty, pretty bad. That gray one, that is a 1600 volt. And that one is pretty damn good. This one here, pretty good. That's that ceramic one. No leakage on that one at 150 volts. No leakage on that one at 150 volts. That one's acceptable. That's the yellow one. This one right here. Marginal leakage. The big one right there. Marginal. Pretty bad. And that's the one that doesn't test worth anything. I guess that's acceptable. This one right here is by far the worst. Okay, the one that's testing like garbage is C45 right there. I guess that could, could cause some problems. I kind of doubt it would cause it not to work at all we could change it and um, see if it does anything. Well, check this out. I resoldered all the ones that I had previously checked 
and I replaced that 0 .01, this one right here, that was showed pretty bad. And I decided for good measure I better check this one and the one that had been replaced before. And the one that had been replaced before on a 50 volt leakage check is showing dead shorted. And in an ohm meter, it's showing 2.5 ohms. That's with one side lifted up out of the board. That right there is our hard fault we were looking for. The one that had been replaced before with that looks like an American made quality capacitor is dead shorted. What I've done is I've just cut the old one out for now and I bodged in there a .002 3000 volt. The one that was in here is a .0022 600 volts. That capacitor is right here and they don't specify a voltage uh, so I'm assuming it's just a 600 volt capacitor. You can see they specify a voltage here and that capacitor is in the feedback loop right so if that was shorted to ground it would completely totally stop any chance of this oscillating this is a good solid fix I'm confident enough with this that I'm just gonna put it back together I'm not gonna totally recap it uh, I don't really care that much about it maybe I'll put it on eBay and see if someone will buy it and I'll put in the listing needs recap uh, I got enough of these um, little black and whites and I never seem to use them so why why spend the money and energy to completely recap it this is a diagnosis and get it working video and I usually don't do repair 101's type video but this is vertical circuit in a tube television repair 101 by the way this set is most definitely made by Toshiba everything in it is branded Toshiba the speaker the yoke the capacitors everything so here we go speaker is not connected but uh, I think we'll probably hear the vertical brightness is still all the way down Oh yeah. Hear it there? So our vertical hold adjusts that speed. So I'm going to turn the vertical hold and you'll hear it change. Okay, um, we'll come back to this this evening when it's dark out here and I'll get the uh, pattern generator out and we'll do a set up on it. We'll actually see how the set works. I might not be able to actually get it to work because all those capacitors are so out of whack that are in there. But hopefully we'll be able to get something. So we'll be back uh, when the lighting works for that. Alright, the sun is setting. Let's uh, see if we could set this up and make it work. I'm going to be using the uh, Syncor VG91 Universal Video Generator and I love this thing because it has the window circle function on it and that makes it real easy to set up linearity. You can buy these pretty cheap now off of eBay. Uh, of course shipping's atrocious because they're big and heavy but it is one awesome piece of equipment. It's better than the leader.
All right, is it dark enough up here out here yet to sync up? It looks like it is. Okay, the uh, VG91 is on channel three. I don't even know if the tuner works in this. Oh, there we go. Okay, where's our vertical hold? Wow. That's an interesting looking circle right there. Let me see if I can play with the... Yeah, so I, I adjust the... Side to side thing is kind of interesting too. All right, at least it vertically locks. Now I'm going to adjust the uh, height and linearity. You got to kind of play with these. Two controls, you got to kind of work your way back and forth between these two controls. And it's interesting, how can the circle go below the line down here and, and up, not go up to it up here? What's up with that? Sorry, we don't we don't need the one kilohertz tone, do we? Leave it alone, put it back where you had it, it was good. Yeah, watch me screw it up. God. No, the bottom needs, yeah, that's pretty, no, it's a little bit egg shaped. It's very touchy. It's a very, very touchy adjustment. That's why the uh, that's why having the generator is so nice. Now I'll show you another adjustment here, which is rotating the yoke. This is what happens if you rotate the yoke. So I'll try and get that. that tightened down it's not going to be perfect the capacitors in it are garbage so let's see that's window circle that's crosshatch
So you can see that looks pretty good. Uh, 10 bar staircase. Uh, what else do we have here? Color bars. Sure, that'd be real effective on this. Uh, dots. And dot. You, you could see it right there. See the dot? No? Anyway, should we do a multi burst sweep generator? So, this is our bandwidth right here. So, what can we make out? It's not too bad. I can make out these lines here. That's actually pretty good. That is a uh, color carrier. That's 41.75. Not bad. Not bad. You can see as it warms up, it's moving around a little bit. Now the bottom is... You should be able to get this, if you were to recap this, you should be able to get this perfect and it should stay stable. You know, you got this retrace garbage at the top here. That could very well be from... Uh, that could be filter hum that you're seeing there. If you watch the bottom. It needs a total recap. It needs a loving home, which it probably will never get. It needs all those crappy capacitors changed. It's very possible the vertical output tube is damaged from running it without the oscillator. Okay, enough of my babbling. Let's get it on the uh, get it on a signal and see what the picture looks like. Remember I said at the beginning of this video you should be able to hear the vertical running? Listen to this. It is loud. It is very loud. Teen Choice Awards. Nothing, nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. I'm trying to get this stupid thing adjusted so that we can see it. So you can see at the top and the bottom there's a there's a bar here. That bar is not lack of deflection that's because this is 16 by 9 widescreen being fed into a uh, 4 by 3 television. Uh, you could you could take and
crank that up, but then then your circle would be all stretched. You know. You know what, that's probably to a recorded track, so it, that'll get tagged. But anyway, uh, yeah, Teen, Teen Awards on Fox. erupted this afternoon. Counter demonstrators clashed with police after they tried to protest against a pro-Trump group named Patriot Prayer. Several people were arrested. Patriot Prayer had organized what they called a freedom. Okay, so if you watch this, you'll notice that even though the circle was right, it stretched out up here at the top. And that's where we had those retrace lines. That is, yeah, look at his forehead. That is... The reason for that is the bad capacitors. That is a symptom of bad capacitors. If we did a recap, it would be linear all the way across. So basically this area in the middle is linear and then it goes out of linearity at the top. And this is this is broadcast in four by three. That's why it fills out the whole news. Standard definition. And I wanted to do more than just shake my head and say, "Oh, that's horrible." Yesterday, it all started with the white nationalist rally. We are standing against bigotry. We are standing against fascism. Today, they were exercising their First Amendment rights on the steps of L.A. City Hall, and they took aim at the white supremacists and the man in the White House. I hope that we can get Trump to learn to love and not wreck the United States. So you want to see him change a little bit, huh? Yes, I do. I really do. No Trump! No KKK! No fascist USA! President Trump's tweets condemning what happened yesterday weren't strong enough in the minds of some. They're defending Nazis and white supremacy. LAPD said no trouble at all, no arrest made here in downtown Los Angeles.